get together every Sunday to get together. <laughs> What's up, Sunday fans? Welcome back to another Watching Sundays. My name is Flip. I'm Element. We get together every Sunday to look at some of our favorite... favorite. <laughs> What's up, Sunday fans? Welcome back to another Watching Sundays. My name is Flip. <laughs> What's up, Sunday fams? Welcome back to another Watching Sundays. My name is Flip. I'm Element. We get together every Sunday to catch up on our favorite TV shows and movies and all things in pop culture entertainment. We're talking about The Orville. What an adventure! Oh, yes! Such an adventurous yes. episode. Yes. I know, I know, oh, I know. So good. So good, so good. Ah, uh, road not taken, okay. So obviously last week we speculated on the consequences of mm -hmm. Kelly's uh, memory wipe not working. Yes. And rejecting Ed in his uh, follow-up call. Yes. And we got to see how it played out in this week, which is this brand new timeline in which the Kalon have conquered half of the galaxy. Oh yes. Ed's not a captain anymore. Uh, Kelly and the rest of the crew of the Orville turned into some scavengers. Mm -hmm. And there's just this post-apocalyptic world that kind of resembles this Star Wars-esque Firefly, Firefly theme. Mm -hmm. And it's just a really great episode. A really amazing episode. So much intrigue, so much mystery, some action. Oh, it was just... You know, last week we were just debating, it was like, what happens to the timeline? Because if the memory wipe didn't work, then the present will be affected because obviously she refused the second date, right? right? And so we were just like, well, we, let's not poke holes into, you know, the, the, the time travel theory here because yeah. uh, it kind of makes the episode not as amazing as as the way I feel about it right now. But once we start poking holes into it, it's like, oh man, there's just so many holes. Yeah, I mean, you know, if you're a sci-fi geek, you're always going to be poking holes in, in, in these sci-fi shows, but time travel is a different beast. And then, you know, when you watch, you know, Back to the Future, when you watch uh, Doctor Who, any kind of show mm -hmm. that deals with time travel, we're always poking holes. And, you know, that the time aberration or the, or the temporal theory that you know, you go back in time to affect the future, but if the future is affected, then that future where you go back in time doesn't exist anymore. Yes. So, so who goes back in time? Yeah, so, you know, it's very easy. You know, this happens, then this happens, and yeah, right? So it just kind of keeps going. Insert know. graphic yeah. here. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> time theory messed up. <laughs> in any case, you can uh, probably guess what part of the episode was my favorite. Oh, and I called it. Yes. I called it. I was kind of like, I was kind of like, you know, being indifferent about the episode a little bit. Mm -hmm. I was, I was on my phone. I was like, yeah. and then like all of a sudden he was like, Hey, Laura, Laura, he was like <laughs> tapping on my shoulder. I was like, I know, I know. He's like, you know, I was like, no, oh, you wait. don't. No, you didn't. <laughs> you did not. I and was then, like, Laura, it's Laura, it's Laura. And then of course she showed up and my heart, you know, Fell skipped a beat once again. And you know, I confirmed it again. You know, she's my favorite. I like yes. her better than I like Tala. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm sorry to Tala and any fans of Tala, but I, I wish she was the head of security again for the Orville. But in any case, she was obviously instrumental in mm -hmm. providing them with the protein that they needed to make the memory wipe work. Yes. And I guess, you know, that's that's all her role in this yeah, episode. That was, it, it was fun to see her back. It was, a, it was a brief moment, but what I did kind of realize that I missed, you know, um, Halston Sage's presence or the Alara Catan of the Orville. I missed right. that kind of naivete. Her, di her dynamic, basically, her dynamic, with the crew. Right. Yeah, I really missed that. Where Tala is just a little bit more, like, um, straightforward, uh, more experienced, mature, I guess, presence mm -hmm. as the chief of security. But, and I said, um, I said in our previous episode, she provides that that youthful, youthful energy. energy. Yes, yes, yes. But mm. I did get you back in uh -huh. the in the later on in the episode when they had to go back to the Orville and recover, um, recover the Orville. Mm, I can't so that I they could one. so they could fix the timeline and. You know, they had some life signs there. Who's going to survive down there? All this time, nine months, who's going to survive? He thought it was Isaac. I was mm. like, we haven't seen Bordis in a while. Oh, Where's Bordis? Can't believe was Bordis. I missed that. That is my favorite character. I did not even notice that he was missing in the episode until that very moment. <laughs> oh, such disappoint. Yeah, I, I am very disappointed in myself. <laughs> but Bordis seems to have clung on to life. Mm -hmm. Cling on to life. Seven, <gasps> seven months, seven months underwater, surviving on life rations and just the hope and the belief that he'll see Clyden and Topa once again at Mockless. Except, you know, Gor uh, not Gordon, T Tala was like, oh, <laughs> Mockless is destroyed though. Yeah, so you can go ahead. It was the most, 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 it was the most,
most empathic delivery of news, <laughs> yeah. right? It was just like, well, hey, I know. But, but like, Machlis is destroyed, though. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well. Sorry. All right, well. Let's move on to the next <laughs> mission. <laughs> uh, but again, poking theories and poking holes into this episode, I thought that the Orville, the ship, was shot down, damaged enough to crash into the Pacific Ocean, where, you know, it stayed there dormant for seven whatever months that it was still mm -hmm. there. And all of a sudden, they do an amazing job getting it back up in orbit. They never said it was out of commission. I think mm -hmm. it was shot down, everybody escaped through the pods, and he was he remained with the ship during its uh, crash landing. Yes. I don't think it was, like, actually shut down and out mm -hmm. of commission to the point where... Like, it was just not working anymore, and they revived it suddenly in this episode. I think that, you know, everyone escaped, and Bordis went down with the ship, and then just kind of put it on minimal power and let the Kalon chase after everyone else. Yes, and uh, beyond all of that poking holes in this episode, especially at that part, that time sequence, or that sequence itself, when the Orville powered back up again and went up into the orbit, it was so inspirational and so, like... Motivation. Inspiring. Yeah, it was, it was a really nice scene. It was a great. It was a great set piece. It was. A, it was a great sequence to see. Uh, and you know, you think about it, and you're like, hey, they still have budget. Well, and well, <laughs> I did not even think about budget. Well, maybe I did. Maybe you I thought did. about yeah, budget I in the Kalon episodes. Yeah. yeah, I was like, well, okay, cool. Last episode, they have actually. To have they've a been on a roll. Budget. They've been on a roll the last couple of episodes where they were they just like spending like, money here left and yeah, right on the. Facts. I don't know what to t what to tell you guys, but like the Orville is 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 up and coming, using more and more budget in all of their episodes. And I just feel like this season was better than last season, and next season is gonna be even better. Like I just hope that it's even better. Yeah, I mean, season three, we were we were talking about how we didn't get to see actually what the consequences of them fixing the memory wipe is gonna be. Mm -hmm. You think we're gonna see another another timeline, or are they gonna try to just continue it off um, of the main timeline that they did diverged from to begin with? Well, no. The only thing I can really contemplate on is seeing what the Calvan race or the Calvan species. Right, we were introduced to a new species called the Calvan. Obviously, they hinted at it saying, oh, they're the only race that's not been conquered by the Kalon. Yeah. So they're kind of like a potential threat to the Kalon. Mm. And so season three could be an exploration point for that as well. I mean, yes. obviously in, 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 in you know, subsequent seasons for all sci-fi shows, there's always the opportunity to explore new, new races because we haven't seen mm. all of the species or all of the races in this universe. And yeah. there's multiple galaxies. You know, it's an endless space out there. And I hope that the Krill come into the Peace Union as well we get to see Talea and Ed come mm -hmm. together again they're gonna have babies make some babies he's gonna put it up all in her <laughs> no we're not allowed to say that are we hey badge is a scientific <laughs> word bye 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 oh. uh, in any case <laughs> that was the season finale of the Orville what did you guys think of that episode leave it in the comment section down below also leave what you think's gonna happen in season three as always, we put up videos every Sunday, so come check us out every Sunday when we post up new videos. Leave a like button on this video, subscribe, and hit the bell notification so you know when we post them. And we'll see you guys next week.